Welcome to our first online class. And this time it is about the science behind endangered and extinction. What is meant by extinction? Extinction in biology means the dying out or extermination of species. Extinction occurs when species are diminished because of environmental forces, such as habitat fragmentation, global change, natural disasters, overexploitation of species for human use, or because of evolutionary changes in their members, such as genetic inbreeding, poor reproduction, and decline in population numbers. Rates of extinction vary widely. For example, during the last 100,000 years of the Pleiocene epoch, about 2.6 million to 11,700 years ago, some 40% of the species existing genera of large mammals in Africa and more than 70% in North America, South America and Australia went extinct. Ecologists estimate that the present day extinction rate is 1,000 to 10,000 times the background extinction rate because of the deforestation, habitat loss, overhunting, pollution, climate change and other human activities. Although extinction is an ongoing future of Earth's flora and fauna, the vast majority of species ever to have lived are extinct. The fossil record reveals five unusual large extinctions, each involving a diminish of vast numbers of species. These conspicuous declines in diversity are referred to as mass extinction. Mass extinctions are distinguished from the majority of extinctions which occur continually and are referred to as background extinction, ranked in descending order of severity they are. Premium extinction, about 265.1 million to about 251.9 million years ago. The most dramatic die-off, eliminating about half of all families, some 95% of marine species, nearly wiping out brachiopides and corals, and 70% of land species, including plants, insects, and vertebrates. The second, we have got Ordovician, Silurian extinction, about 443.8 million years ago, which in the induce included about 25% of marine families and 85% of marine species with brachiopods, chorodons, biozoans, and tri trilobites suffering greatly. Third, we have got the Cretaceous plateau gene extinction about 66.0 million years ago, involving about 80% of all animal species, including dinosaurs and many species of plants. The fourth, we have got the end of Triassic period about 201.3 million years ago, possibly caused by rapid climate change. Or by an asteroid striking Earth. This mass extinction event caused about 20% of marine families and 76% of all extinct species to die out, and of course, including, as we all know it, then dinosaurs. The fifth was the Devonian extinction, about 407.6 million to about 358.9 million years ago, which included 15 to 20% of marine families and 70 to 80% of all animal species. Roughly 86% of marine brachiopied species perished, along with many corals, conodonts, and trilobites. In addition, increased levels of greenhouse gases have begun to alter to force many species to migrate towards the poles and up mountain slopes in order to remain in habitats. With the same climate conditions, most ecologists, conservation biologists, and climate scientists worry that global warming will contribute greatly to species extinction. It is called human induced extinctions. Many species have become extinct because of hunting and over harvesting. The con con conversation, conversion of wetlands to forests, to croplands and urban areas, pollution, the introduction of invasive species and other forms of human caused destruction of the natural environments. Indeed, current rates of human-induced extinctions are estimated to be about 1,000 times greater than the past natural background rates of extinction, leading some scientists to call modern times the sixth mass extinction. 
This high exchange rate is largely due to the exploitation growth of in human numbers. As a result of increasing human population, habitat loss is a great factor in current levels of extinction. For example, one study releases in 2015 predicted that 5.2% of species would be lost as a result of global warming, along with the rise in average temperature of 2 Celsius or to 3.6 Fahrenheit. The study also predicted that about 16% of Earth species would be lost if surface warming increases to about 4.3 degrees Celsius or 7.7 .7 degrees Fahrenheit. Changes in ocean temperatures and increasing ocean acidification also threaten many marine species, especially corals and mollusks with external shells. Overexploitation from hunting and harvesting also has adversely affected many species. For example, about 20 million tropical fish and 13 million corals are harvested annually for the aquarium trade, depleting natural population in some parts of the world. All these factors have increased the numbers of threatened species. Almost one in four mammal species, for example, include four of the six remaining species of great apes and one of one in eight bird species were considered at significant risk of extinction at the start of the 21st century. Here we have got the 36 animals so far that have been lost to history due to human activity. There is a reason for extinction here. We have got the keys on the side of the maps. The arrow shows the hunting or poaching. The rabbit shows invasive species introduction. The factory like picture shows pollution, the fishing shows it's visible it's fishing, and the destruction of habitat and climate change. Around the 10,000 to 1,200 CE, the elephant bird went extinct. Their eggs fed a whole family. However, in the 14th CE, Hast's eagle also went extinct due to hunting and poaching and invasive species. In 1445, Moa got also extinct, same due to poaching and destruction of its habitat. And in 1627, CE, Arox, which is the, the wild ancestor of domestic cattle, also went extinct. It lived in Eurasia and died due to hunting and destruction of its habitat. The most famous bird which we know has gone extinct, the dodo, died around 1662. Most of the most culturally significant human caused extinctions and they died due to the three factors invasive species, destruction of its habitat, and over hunting, we can say. In 1774, the Sardian pika got extinct due to the destruction of its habitat and, and invasive species, and in 1768, the stellar sea cow got extinct. In 1800s, the blue buck got extinct due to over hunting. In 1852, the great oak, which was a species of penguin which lived in the northern Atlantic Ocean, died due to hunting and overfishing. It was thought that its dawn or its feathers was used to fill pillows. In 1870s, the Atlas bear got extinct, and the main reason for this was that the Romans used it for the bears in fight the gladiator games in the, in the Roman arenas. In 1876, the Wara got extinct. It, it used to live in Falkland and died due to hunting as well. In 1880s, Eastern Elk and the Seamen got extinct. Eastern Elk was the many cousin elk populations that have been re reintroduced in some parts of their old range. And the Seamen is it's said that their super soft, dense fur was highly prized among fur traders. In 1883, the quagga got extinct. It said that they, the skins were particularly prized. And in 1907, 1907, Hua got extinct due to the overhunting, destruction of its habitat, and invasive species. Same right here, we have got in 1914, 
two of these species of birds got extinct, the passenger pigeon that it set on its own time when they passed by migrating, the whole sky would turn black due to the large numbers of them. It also got extinct mostly due to the hunting of it. And laughing owl as well was also gone extinct due to invasive species. It was said to have a very interesting hoot like the barking of a young dog. 1918, the Carolina parakeet got extinct. Their feathers were also used as decorative adornments, but the full reason for their sudden disappearance is unknown. But as I written over there, it's gone extinct due to hunting and destruction of its habitat. In 1925, the Bubble Heart, heart Beast got extinct due to hunting. In 1927, the Kuakichin Vicent got extinct. In 1928, Sarin wild ass got extinct. It was written in the Arimian Peninsula. And one of, again, the most famous extinctions was the Tasmanian tiger, called the Thalassine also, in 1936. And it seems that the, the a farmer lost and shot the last one. In 1938, the Schomburg's deer got extinct in central thailand due to hunting and destruction of its habitat and we have got the caspian tiger pantra tigris which also got extinct but leeches are hoping to bring it back in the 200s or the 2000s which we are living right now the pyrenean ibex got extinct due to hunting and invasive species also the cebu wati pig and this was lost due to destruction of its habitat in 2006, Bai Ji, a species of penguin, river penguin, got lost due to the four main factors hunting, destruction of its habitat, pollution, and invasive species, and of course, overfishing as well. But the Chinese government, after an in intensive search, declared the species gone extinct. However, there have been reported sightings since 2006, and the IUCN still considered it to be critically endangered. In 2010, the ultra grebe got extinct in Madagascar, and this also got extinct due to the destruction of its habitat, invasive species, and pollution. And the most famous we have got right here is the Western Black Rhino, which I got is extinct in 2011 because of its giant horns demanded a lot of money for their horns, and that pushed prices as high as fifty thousand dollars per kilogram, leading to ex extreme poaching and quick extinction. The most sad extinction hour got, got around in 2012, the Pinta Island tortoise that lived in the Galapagos Islands. The last of its kind, Lon St. George as we all know it, waited for a male until his death in 2012. And the most recent is the 2016 one, the Bramel K. Milomins is a species of mouse and it got extinct in Bramel K and was the first mammalian species made extinct due to climate change effects. But why is it so important, those magnificent creatures? Why do we say that we have to save them? Each time a species goes extinct, the world around us unravels a bit. The consequences are profound, not just in those places and for those species, but for all of us. All often obscured by the noise and rush of modern life, people retain deep emotional connections within the natural world. Wildlife and plants have inspired our histories, languages and how we view the world. The presence of wildlife brings joy and enriches to us all, and each extinction makes our home a lonely and colder place for us and future generations. The current extinction crisis is entirely of our own making. More than a century of habitat destruction pollution, the spread of invasive species and over harvest from the wild, climate change, pollution, uh, population growth and other human activities have pushed the natural environment and the natural creatures to the brink. And we can say every species or every taxon is in, is, is in trouble. From the amphibians, which are actually no groups of animals has, has a high rate of in, endangerment than amphibians. Scientists estimate that a third or more of all the roughly 6,300 known species of amphibians are at risk of extinction. 
The current Avivia execution rate may range from 2,000 to 25,000. 39 to 45,474 times the background extinction rate. Frogs, toads, and salamanders are disappearing because of habitat loss, water and air pollution, climate change, ultraviolet light exposure, and in induced exotic species and diseases. However, in the bird family, you can say birds occur in nearly every habitat on the planet and are often the most visible and familiar wildlife to people across the globe because we mostly see them in the roads, in the parks we really visit. But birds also decline in population across most to, to all habitats confirm that profound changes are occurring on our last on our planet in to respond to our human activities. Globally it is estimated that 12% of known 9865 bird species are now considered threatened, with 192 species or 2% facing an extremely high risk of extinction in the wild. Two more species than in 2008. Habitat loss and degradation have caused most of the bird declines, but the impact of invasive species and capture by collectors play a big role too. Fish, increasing demand for water and indeed the, we can say overfishing and the damming of rivers throughout the world. The dumping and accumulation of various pollutants and invasive species make aquatic ecosystems some of the most threatened on the planet. Thus, it is not surprising that there are many fishes that are endangered in both freshwater and marine habitats too. Invertebrates Invertebrates from butterflies to mollusks to earthworms to corals are vastly diverse and though no one knows just how many invertebrate species exist. They are estimated to account for about 97% of the total species of animals on Earth. Of the 1.3 million known invertebrate species, it is evaluated that 9,526 species, with about 30% of the species evaluated at risk of extinction. Freshwater invertebrates are severely threatened by water pollution, groundwater withdrawal, and water projects. While a large number of invertebrates of notable scientific significance have become either endangered or extinct due to deforestation and much more other problems, especially because of the rapid destruction of tropical and rainforests. In the oceans, reef building corals are declining at an alarming rate. 2008's first ever com comprehensive global assessment of these animals revealed that a third of the reef building corals are threatened. When we talk about mammals, we all know that we are ourselves mammals and perhaps one of the most striking elephants of the present extinction crisis is in fact that the majority of our closest relatives, the primates, are severely endangered. About 90% of the primates, the group that contains monkeys, lemurs, lodids, galagos, tarsiers and apes, as well as humans, live in tropical forests which are fast disappearing. The IUCN estimates that almost 50% of the world's primate species are at risk of extinction. Overall, the IUCN estimates that half the globe's 5,491 known mammals are declining in, the po in population and a fifth are clearly at risk of disappearing forever. We know less than 1,131 mammals across the globe classified as endangered, threatened or vulnerable. So, we can say primates, marine mammals, including several species of whales, dolphins and porpoises, are among those mammals slipping most quickly towards extinction. And what about plants? They, they give us food and oxygen. And true photosynthesis plants provide the oxygen we breathe and the food we eat, and are thus the foundation of most life on Earth. They are also the source of majority of medicines in use today. Unlike animals, plants can't readily move as their habitat is destroyed, making them particularly vulnerable to extinction. Indeed, uh, actually one study found that habitat destruction leads to an extinction death, whereby plants that appear dominant will disappear over time because they aren't able to disperse to new habitat patches. Already, scientists say, 
warming of the climate or warming temperatures are causing quick and dramatic changes in the range of distribution of plants around the world. With plants being up the backbone of ecosystems and the base of the food chain. That's very bad news for all species including us, which depend on plants for food, shelter and survival. And reptiles. We don't see reptiles as much today. Most of them have retreated to desert areas, caves and away from our cities and from urban areas. Globally, 21% of the total evaluated reptiles in the world are deemed endangered or vulnerable to extinction by the IUCN. The main threats to reptiles are habitat destruction and the invasive of non-native species which prey on reptiles and compete with them for habitat and food. And the most recent extinction was actually this year itself on around January and it was one of the world's largest freshwater fish and maybe the first extinction of 2020. Uh, the, it was a Chinese paddlefish. It was one of the largest freshwater fish in the world and it says to, it has gone extinct. The fish once common in the Yang River in China but overfishing and habitat fragmentation sealed the species do. And there is no hope of for bringing it back as scientists say, as no individual exists in captivity and no living tissues are conserved for potential reassurance. Uh, uh, the Chinese paddlefish was an impressive creature with a large protounding snout. That's why it's given some of the name as uh, the elephant fish as well. This, the paddlefish can, could grow as long as 23 feet, putting it among the sturgeon and the alligator gar which are both fishes and the largest freshwater fish in the world. The last sighting of the fine Chinese paddlefish was in 2003 and since then it is said that it has gone extinct between 2005 and 2010. Now what is meant by endangered? Endangered species are any species that are, that are at risk of extinction because of sudden rapid de decrease or ra rapid changes in the population or loss of its critical habitat. Previously any species of plant or animal that was threatened with extinction could be called as endangered species. But we can say that humans also lead with uh, endangered species around the world. Human beings and endangered species Roughly 99% of the threatened species are at risk because of human activities alone. By the early 21st century, it could be said that human beings, or as scientific called Homo sapiens, meaning wise man, are the greatest threat to biodiversity. The principal threats to species in the wild are habitat loss and habitat degradation. The species are Invasive species, we can say, the growing influence of global warming and chemical pollution, unsustainable hunting, and disease. Many fishes and other forms of aquatic and marine life are also threatened. Among them are long lived species that have life history stages requiring many years to reach sexual maturity. As a result, they are particularly sus susceptible to exploitation. The meat and fins of many sharks, for example, and rays and whales fetch high prices in many parts of the world, which has resulted in the unsustainable harvest of several of those species. But we have always asked this for those who love animals and plants or those who actually care about their own world, how to help nature or how to help indigenous species. In the world, the loss, and this is actually discovered by Charles Darwin, he has said that in the world, the loss of one species often triggers the loss of others. For example, when the grey wolves were hunted to near extinction in Yellowstone National Park, beaver populations also decreased significantly. This is because elk, without the wolf as its predators, grazed more heavily on plants needed by beavers for winter survival. The conservation of endangered species is important for humans as well. A well-balanced ecosystem purifies the environment, giving us clean air to breathe, a healthy water system to support diverse marine life, and arable land 
for agricultural productions. It also provides us with unique plants with medical properties which serve as the foundation of our medicines. When ecosystems fail, our own health is at risk. When saving endangered species or need the full natural environment, we are ultimately saving ourselves. We are often blind to the interconnectedness of everything that supports life. A web so complex and interdependent, we are all only beginning to understand it. The food chain from the tiniest little microorganisms to the largest creatures on earth keep us humans alive. We have got some of them over here. We have got the thing called educate your family about Indian species in your area, which is actually teach your friends and family about wildlife, birds, fish, and plants that live near you. Just awareness of these species is a critical step from the worms in, the, in our gardens to the bats that pollinate and control the mosquitoes. There are many ways that our daily habits at home affect these creatures. The second they have got recycle and buy sustainable products. Much of what threatens local pro uh, populations has to do with development and more and more of the natural world is plundered to product the, the, the product of new goods. Never buy furniture made of wood from rainforest or in native trees. Recycle your cell phones. Or you may ask why? Does anybody over here know the answer? Why should we recycle cell phones? Maybe the material could be used for making other products. Yeah, that's that's one of the factors. Except that. Anything else? So it's actually extraordinary because a mineral used in electronic products is mined, but from where? It is mined from gorilla habitats, and of course gorillas are also are known as primates, and they're also endangered across the globe. Don't use palm oil because forests where tigers live are being cut down to palm, plant palm plantations. The next one we have got is reduce your water consumption, but why? Why should we reduce our water consumption? We can actually say that during droughts, people get better about not, water, not watering their lawns. But we need to understand that clean water is a global pro problem for wild animals as well. So the less human con consume, the better. The next one we have got is to reduce your personal footprint. But how can we do so? Anyone has any idea how can we reduce our uh, personal footprints? Do not leave germs. Yeah, that's one. That's one of them. Except that. Um, to uh, to help endangered species, like uh, we could buy more, like more, and we can recycle other nice products. Yeah, actually, a very yeah, that's excellent. Yeah. So we can say, uh, especially the parents, we can say this. You can say that they need to drive less, but walk more. It's not only exercise for yourself, but it emits, you know, the, the carbon footprints of ours by driving cars. You can use biodegradable products and eat whole food from uh, your farmer's market. Do not buy plastic products. We all know why we shouldn't buy plastic products. Maybe we can actually have our own bags and we can take our own bags to the store. reuse containers and properly depose of lightweight plastics because you know wild animals such as the turtle you see uh, in the in the PBT actually get tangled in these products and they eat up they end up in the ocean being ingested by small fish and killing off beneficial microorganisms because turtles main food source is seaweed but sometimes they are even seen feeding on jellyfishes the most poisonous jellyfishes so the, it actually re resembles a jellyfish like thing when you see a plastic floating in the oceans. So this is something which we all cannot do but those for example in their own countries if they have got a backyard or a garden we can say we, they can create a backyard wildlife habitat. We can say they can put a bird feeders and other wildlife attractants such as birdhouse and bats. But insects too are important for environments. 
So we have to establish a pollinator garden with native vegetations in our yards. Attracting native insects like bees and butterflies can help pollinate your plants, but avoid planting invasive species. Non-native plants can overtake and destroy native species in a blink on which animals depend on. Visit a national park refugee or a natural wildlife refugee or other open spaces. These areas actually protect lands provide habitat to many native wildlife, such as birds, fish, and plants. Scientists tell us the best way to protect endangered species is to protect the places where they live. Get involved, for example, by volunteering at your local nature center or wildlife refugee. Actually, I myself, for example, sometimes go and take plastic products or plastic from the oceans. So that's a very critical step to save the animals. With each and every single one of us matter in saving the animals and plants. Go wild level bird watching. That's a very fun activity to do, especially in this summer. Wild wildlife related recreations creates millions of jobs and support local businesses. Now, this is a very critical step which we all can do. Make your home wildlife friendly. The main question is how? And if you have any idea how can we make our wildlife our home wildlife friendly? I have to take care of them. Yeah, that's one more step. Always feed them and don't let them go don't let them starve. Yeah. And yeah, that's that's reduce the use of plastic is actually a very important critical step. But what about your the garbage? For example, we can say if you are living in desert areas or such as forest areas, there are raccoons. So, how can we protect them, for example? Plant trees. Yeah. And if and if we are taking care of sea animals, always if we don't have a tank, just fill a bucket with water and keep it there. Yeah, we can say that those are some good steps. But we'll always make sure that we leave animals in the wild and take care of them from a safe distance but as we said we can uh, make uh, your home wildlife friendly the first thing is we can secure garbage in shelters or cans with locking lids for example we, can, we have to feed pets indoors and lock pet also indoors at night avoid attracting wild animals into your home reduce the use of water on your in your home and garden so that animals that live in or near your area have a good water supply and have a better chance of survival. So, and it's written here, native plants provide food and shelter for native wildlife. Attracting native insects like bees and butterflies because they play a very important role in pollination of your, of your plants. But the spread of non-native plants have a great impact in native populations around the world because, for example, if you all have been feeding on one food source for a very long time, you have already got used to that food source, so you cannot just suddenly shift to another food source. And invasive species, because they don't have any competitors, they spread rapidly. They, they can cover the area within at least a very short time. Invasive trees compete with native species for resources and habitat, and they can even prey on native species directly, forcing native species towards extinction. For example, it's in here also uh, herbicides and pesticides may keep yards looking nice and we all know no insects, they are to be much more good looking. But they are in fact hazardous pollutants that affect wildlife in many levels and in many ways. Many herbicides and pesticides take a long time to degrade and build up in, in the soils or throughout the food chain. Predators such as hawks or here falcons owls and coyotes can be harmed if they eat poisoned animals and they're actually they're very important because there are some species like desert frogs that live in those soils and they because if they actually breathe through their skin such herbicides is going to be very toxic for them now protecting wildlife habitats how can we protect 
wildlife habitats? Uh, we can protect the wildlife habitat by like uh, we should uh, we should like be responsible for the safety. Also, we uh, we should like uh, we should uh, we can try to get get together and adopt an animal for from, from the wild from a wildlife. So uh, like so the conservation of organization like that. So people like the like the people and the the organizations such as the wildlife fund like. They also adopt the wildlife so then they can uh, so then they protect our animals and also uh, if a volunteer if you don't have money to give you can donate our time we can donate our time for uh, the, uh, for cleaning the beaches and rescuing wild animals or we can teach visitors and we yes, can exactly. also visit uh, zoos aquariums and national parks. Yeah, that's actually a very critical step and that's actually very true. Especially for children such as your ages, my age, it is actually we find a lot of free time, especially during our holidays. So why not learn about what animals live around us? We arrange to go and visit them, learn about them, and spread awareness. Perhaps the greatest threat that faces many species in the is the widespread destruction of habitats. Scientists tell us the best way to protect Indian species is to protect the special places where they live. Wildlife must have places to find food, shelter and raise their young. Logging, oil and gas drilling, overgrazing and development all result in habitat destruction. Indian species habitat should be protected and these impacts minimized. So we can see by protecting habitats, entire communities of animals and plants and also ourselves can be protected together. Did you know that the six of the seven species of sea turtles are list, listed as whether endangered or critically endangered? Sea turtles face multiple hazards that threaten their survival daily. Pollution cause can cause fatal entanglements or ingestions. Uncontrolled coastal developments along the shoreline limits their nesting grounds Poaching activities target their eggs as well as skins, shells and meat. There are just a few of the common threats sea turtles face. Sea turtles play a fundamental role in the marine ecosystems. By grazing on sea grass, turtles help keep it short, encouraging it to grow horizontally across the sea floor. In this way, the seagrass provides better support and protection for other marine life as well. It can also remove carbon dioxide from atmosphere more efficiently, which is vital for regulating the global climate. So if you are all ready with your pencils and pens, we have got a drawing for you to complete step by step. And as soon as you finish that, you can send it to us in email or post on your Instagram account and Tigers. Let's draw a dodo, one of the most famous extinct birds. The steps, of, the steps are given to you and at the end you can color it any color you like. were flightless birds that were grey in colour, about 3 feet tall and weighed 22 to 40 pounds. The dodo bird lived on the island of Mariatis. They had large hooked beaks and they were flightless birds because of one reason, they really don't have any predators to fly away from on that island. The dodos might have eaten fallen fruits, looking at their huge beaks, maybe nuts, seeds, bulbs and roots. It has been also suggested that the dodo might have eaten crabs and shellfish, like their relatives, the crown pigeons that live today. Dodos lived and nested on the ground and ate fruits that had fallen from the trees.
actually can't wait to see how you all draw the dodo bird. I finished drawing it, but um, the actual dodo's color is grey, but to make it a bit cartoonish, I just colored it with blue. I tried drawing once and then uh, I thought of drawing another one, so I'm, I'm still working on it. Like I've still So we've actually reached a good slide. So in the end of summer, hopefully, I'll be working on on these three books, mainly the Our Changing Planet and the Art of Preservation. Our Changing Planet is basically about uh, how our world is changing, how climate change and all those plants pollution are affecting animals, and how animals affect us. And it's from eye view of the animal as well. And how about the Art of Preservation? Is basically how you can preserve animals. Because I think most of you know that I actually preserve animals also, but those are you have to make sure that they are already naturally dead, so you won't harm them anyway. And this is about how to preserve different species of animals and plants. And the third book in the left corner, we have got a glimpse into the natural world. So basically, that's a guide into the evolution of human beings and animals. How did animals evolve and how did plants evolve over time? from the starting of life on earth till today. And the next which I'm going to show you is the website we're working on which will open to you a new door into joining for example our documentary. In this you can actually for example subscribe yourselves you can for receiving the updates we have also got you can so when you click on the subscribe button it will straight away take you to the youtube channel and all the uh, all the trailers are down here i hope you have seen all of them at least and before we upload anything on youtube we the, 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 it's going to first appear on the website so you have a great chance to watch the videos before it actually releases over here which you're working on is actually some tabs which have got the updates any for example new idea we're going to introduce any new te te for example any new technology any new way volunteering activities and more here we've got the videos you can watch all of our videos which we have posted so far and here we are going to share with you the mission, the crew who is part of the team and here you can download books and resources for free for example uh, a guide to insects or for example the books which I am writing on the PDFs to be available on the website for free and on, on here you can actually see that how you can help to for example save the animals and plants in your area what are the ways you can change things in your life that you can help things animals you know get back into balance here you can see be a, you can see be a part of our videos you can book your documentary we be always putting on a, a, a booking list of uh, which documentary we're going to work on next so you can book your documentary for free and join in our next videos speaking about for example whatever the title is the next thing I've got here is activities and more. Is basically you can do quizzes, puzzles, check your knowledge. You can do online courses about animals and plants, about nature. And uh, we have also got here you can chat with us. Let us know, for example, if any there is anything which you would like to know. For example, you can ask us how I can join this team or how can I go around in this website. And so it will be it will open new doors and hopefully. It'll be done by the end of summer. Thank you for attending this week's educational course. Hope you had fun. 
and hope you enjoy drawing the dodo. If you've got any questions for those who are watching this video right now, make sure you comment below and for the next uh, lesson, we'll for sure answer your questions. And make sure you subscribe to our channel and go out check out our Instagram as well so you won't miss our next live stream educational online session. If you have also drawn an extraordinary cute dodo drawing, make sure you share it with us in my email in the description.